From the media district adjacent, it's time to take another deep plunge into the issues and topics that face Burbank. Let's see what we have on the plate to dissect today. Hello, Burbank. Craig Sherwood here. And today we're going to discuss the upcoming school board meeting on October 17th, where they're going to put in a policy regarding cell phones and students. We brought the information once again to our two friends, John and Jenny, and asked them to go over both the statute that California passed and the proposed school board policy. So take it away, John and Jenny. All right. So ever get that thing like you're trying to you know, really focus on something. Oh, yeah. Could be like studying for a big exam or just like reading something interesting oh, and no. your phone just keeps like buzzing. Getting totally sucked in. Yeah. Like you can't escape it. Now imagine that. But you're a kid in school and it's not just you. It's like everyone around you. Ugh, it's like a constant battle for your attention. Right. That's exactly what's going on in California right now. That's why we're doing this deep dive. We're looking at California's Phone-Free School Act. And the thing is, this isn't just like some far off idea. This is happening now. Yeah. We've actually got the bill right here. Assembly Bill 3216. Wow. Straight from the California Assembly. And we've got a report from Burbank Unified School District. Okay. Showing how they're tackling this whole thing head on. So they're already putting it into action. Oh, absolutely. Which is wild, right? Yeah. This bill was literally introduced and passed in the same year. Wow. That's really fast for like government stuff. Makes you wonder what's going on there. Why the rush? Right. Well, if you look back at when it was first introduced back in February, there was a ton of research already piling up. Mm -hmm. Educators, parents, researchers, everyone was basically saying, hey, these smartphones, yeah. they're really impacting kids, especially when it comes to you know, actually learning. Makes sense. Attention spans, focus, anxiety, all this stuff was being linked back to, you know. To the phones. Exactly, being glued to the phones. So it's kind of like lawmakers are finally like, oh, okay, this is a real problem. We got to do something. Yeah, exactly. The research was basically screaming at them. <laughs> and now they're looking for solutions, which is where this bill comes in. Every single school in California has to figure out its phone policy. By when? By July 2026. Wow. 2026. That is right around the corner. It's coming up fast. So this isn't just some future problem. This is something schools are dealing with right now. Oh, yeah. They have to figure this out like yesterday and Burbank. They're not wasting any time. They're already way ahead of the curve. OK, so let's talk about Burbank. What's their plan? Are they just like going through the motions or are they actually on board with this whole phone free thing? This is what's really interesting. Burbank's not messing around. They actually want to change the whole culture around phones in school. Okay, so like a total shift. Totally. Their report really emphasizes creating an environment where kids can actually focus. Yeah, good luck with that when everyone's got a smartphone. Yeah. I remember even in college trying to focus when the person next to me was scrolling through who knows what. Oh, I know, right? It's impossible. It's like you're fighting a losing battle. And that's exactly the kind of distraction Burbank wants to get rid of. Makes sense. But do they have, like, anything to back that up? Or is this just, like, a feeling they have? Oh, they've got research for sure. They cite all sorts of studies. For example, the National Education Association. They found a direct link between fewer distractions and kids doing best in school. Well, yeah, less time on TikTok, more time on, like, actual schoolwork. Exactly. I can see the logic there. Yeah. But what about the students? What do they think about giving up their phones all day? Ah, uh, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? We'll get into those surveys they did with families and staff a bit later. OK. Should be interesting to see what everyone thinks. It's more than just academics, though, isn't it? They're also concerned about the emotional and social well-being of students. Absolutely. One of the key benefits Burbank Unified highlights in their report is the reduction of cyberbullying. Uh -huh. It's a huge problem in schools. And the report cites research from the American Psychological Association showing that taking away those opportunities for online harassment can significantly improve the mental health of students. That's pretty powerful stuff. I can't help but wonder if there's a bit of a backlash from parents or students about taking away the phone for the whole school day. That's a good point. And it's something Burbank Unified seems to be addressing directly. They're not just implementing a blanket ban. They've got a detailed plan for how this policy will play out in practice. OK, give me the rundown. What are the key things students and parents need to know? Here's the deal. During school hours, from the first bell to the dismissal bell, 
Phones need to be completely out of sight. Uh huh. No more sneaking a peek under the desk. They call it the out of sight policy. So no more Instagram scrolling in class. That's a pretty drastic change. It is, but Burbank Unified is serious about this. If a student is caught with a phone out, it's confiscated and their parents are contacted. Okay. The goal is to make sure the policy is consistently enforced, which is crucial for creating that focused learning environment. I can see why some parents might be nervous about that, especially if their child needs to get in touch with them during the day. Good point. That's why Burbank Unified has made provisions for emergency situations. Students can request to use a school phone to contact their families, but the emphasis is on parents calling the school directly if they need to reach their child. It's like going back to the old-fashioned way of communication where the school is the hub for connecting with your child. Exactly. It's about reestablishing a more centralized communication system rather than relying on individual phones. I'm curious, how does this play out for the students? Does the report address the student perspective? Absolutely. Burbank Unified understands that this policy is a big change for students, so they've conducted surveys to gather feedback from both students and families. They're hoping to get a sense of what works, what doesn't work, and how to improve the policy based on real-world experience. That's smart. It shows that they're not just imposing this policy from on high. They're trying to build a system that works for everyone. And that's key. It's not just about creating a phone-free school. It's about creating a positive learning environment that supports the needs of both teachers and students. So we've covered the policy, the rationale, and the ways Burbank is trying to make this work. But what about the bigger picture? What are some of the potential challenges or downsides? That's where things get really interesting, though, you know? While Burbank is focusing on the positives, like reducing distractions and cyberbullying, there are some potential downsides to consider. For one, some argue that completely cutting off access to personal devices could make students feel isolated or anxious, especially those who rely on them for social connection or even managing anxiety. That's a really good point. It's like we've swung from one extreme to the other, from constant connection to complete disconnection. It makes you wonder, is there a middle ground here? Exactly. And that's something researchers are still exploring. Some experts suggest that instead of outright bans, schools should focus on teaching responsible phone use, incorporating them strategically into the classroom, and maybe even using them as educational tools themselves. It's like the old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. But instead of fighting technology, find ways to make it work for you. Precisely. And that brings us to another important point. Burbank Unified is just one school district in one state. This entire phone-free school movement is still in its infancy, and it'll be fascinating to see how other districts, especially those with fewer resources or in less tech-savvy areas, navigate this new law. It really makes you think about the bigger picture here. Are we at a turning point when it comes to technology's role in education? We might be. And this is where those Burbank surveys become even more intriguing. The report mentions that they'll be analyzing the feedback to see how the policy is impacting not just academic performance, but also student well-being, social dynamics, even things like creativity and critical thinking. I'm really curious to see those results. Right. It's one thing to talk about the potential benefits and drawbacks, but having real data from students, teachers, and parents on the ground, that's gold. Absolutely. And it's something we should all be paying attention to, because this isn't just about phones in schools. It's a much larger conversation about how we prepare young people for a world increasingly dominated by technology. It's about finding that balance, isn't it? Embracing the positive aspects of technology without letting it completely take over our lives. And maybe, just maybe, rediscovering some of the things we might have lost along the way, like actual face-to-face -face conversations, or the simple joy of reading a book without checking your notifications every five seconds. Exactly. It's about asking ourselves some tough questions and being open to different perspectives and solutions. Well, we've certainly covered a lot of ground today. We've explored the ins and outs of California's Phone-Free School Act, unpacked Burbank Unified's unique approach to implementation, and even touched on some of the bigger questions this policy raises about technology's role in our lives. And while there are no easy answers, one thing is clear. This is a conversation that's just getting started. So to our listeners, we encourage you to check out the sources we've discussed, do your own research, and keep the conversation going. What are your thoughts on phones in schools? Do the potential benefits outweigh the challenges? Let us know. This is The Deep Dive, signing off. Thank you for watching the latest My Burbank video. If you have it in your heart, please consider helping us by clicking on the super thanks down below. Or even better, 
go to our channel and consider a membership. Your support is what keeps my Burbank going strong.